uh, after after Pentecost, and, and you know, I think it's important to highlight the fact that uh, this is indeed uh, the season of Pentecost, which in the church calendar is actually the longest uh, period uh, in the church calendar. It goes all the way, this is only the second Sunday after Pentecost, and it goes all the way to Thanksgiving at the end of November. And I think that's very important because it helps us to understand God's intent on really helping us to appreciate the power, the work, and the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. And so we have this long season where we really understand the work of the Holy Spirit. And in today's lesson, we are focusing on simply the calling of God and uh, God's passion to be reconciled to us and not letting anything separate us from the love of God. And it really starts uh, as an example in this very uh, first story in the very first book of the word of God, Genesis. Because when we look at what the scripture is teaching us, it, it shows a very interesting situation that uh, Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And I want you to understand that it's in God's intent to be able to be daily present in your life. For God to just show up, why? Because God loves you. God wants to be with you. Those of you who are in a wonderful relationship, whether it's with your spouse, your children, your siblings, your coworkers, or your friends, you understand that there's just nothing like good fellowship. And many of us, we miss being back in, in the house of God as far as the church building, just because we want to be with each other. I, I, I know some churches and you know, uh, I hope you understand my heart when I say this, but they can't wait for the service to be over so they can just spend some time fellowshipping with one another. <laughs> it's true. You know, sometimes we, we just miss being around each other, catching up with each other, being with each other's presence, laughing with one another, hugging one another, giving each other a high five. We just love being in each other's presence. And God wants you to know it was always his intent from the very beginning to be in our presence, to be in the midst of us, where he can just pop in and pop out at any moment just to uh, spend some time with us. And this was what God was already doing with Adam and Eve. And it is, it's funny because the strange part of this story in Genesis chapter three is that when they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden, Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And I want you to first understand one thing is that when sin enters our life, there is a separation, there is uh, 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 all of a sudden, you don't feel as comfortable in the presence of a holy God that you once did. And that's what's so dastardly about sin is that it impacts your relationship with God. And, you know, especially those of you who've been married for a while, you know how sometimes when there's a tension between your spouse, even though you, nothing is being said, nothing is being done, but there's something that may have been said or may have been done or left undone that creates a tension in the marriage. And, you know, even the silence is glaringly loud and uncomfortable. And that's what Adam felt because he knew that he did something that he had no business doing, and he hid himself from the Lord. 
Now, how many of you think for a second that God didn't know what Adam did? Any hands? Any hands? Don't you know that so often we think God doesn't know? But what I loved about this is that it does not say something that I was pretty much taught as a child growing up, that when you sin against God, God is going to hide himself. God is going to separate because God cannot stand in the presence of sin. So if you sin, huh, you better get ready to start fasting and praying and seeking God because God is going to make himself very hard for you to find. So you make sure you keep yourself together. However, when you look at the story of Adam, that was not the case. In fact, it was just the opposite. God was looking for Adam. God was searching for Eve. Even though God fully knew that Adam and Eve messed up, they had sinned, they had been rebellious, God was still looking for them. And there may be somebody under the sound of my voice right now who you may have done something and you are just so overwhelmed and ashamed and disgusted with yourself. You, you said, how can I have done that? And you just feel the same way Adam did where I just can't be in the presence of God. I don't feel right. I don't feel worthy. God is looking for you. Why? Because God loves you so much. And you are a child of God. You may not be acting like a child of God yet, but still, you are still a child of God. And God loves you. And God will come looking for you. And God's, and, and here's the, one of the things that I noticed that I also wanted to bring our attention to, because especially in these times uh, that we live in today, it says that Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Now, why are you focusing on that, Michael Dean? Good question, I'll tell you. It's because if you look just a few verses uh, previous, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, you will see these words that God told Adam of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, just not of the knowledge of good and evil. We know that story, right? But listen, the very thing that God said was a free and beautiful and wonderful and abundant resource to you is now the very thing that they are using to hide from the presence of the Lord. God says, I created these trees for you, and they are good, uh, pleasant to the eyes, and on these trees are fruit that will uh, cause you to be able to live. It is good for food, is pleasant to look at, God said these trees are, are designed to be a blessing to you and your family. And now all of a sudden, Adam and Eve are using these same things that were supposed to be a blessing and a resource to them to hide from God. And God convicted my heart saying that, you know what, a lot of my people are still doing that even today. The things that I put into your life to be a blessing to you, to be a resource to you, to, to help sustain you and prosper you in this world, you're hiding behind those things. You are trusting more in those things than you are in my presence and my spirit. But yet still, God says, Adam, where are you? And instead of just saying, here I am, and why I am here, Adam began to 
make excuses and said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Remember we said that Adam even understood I hid myself. God, you never hid yourself from me. And when he said, have, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? Now, for most of us, that's a simple yes or no answer, is it not? Have you eaten? Yes or no. But instead of a yes or no answer, Adam began to make excuses and point fingers. God said, have you done this? I am dealing with you, Adam, you are not responsible for what anybody else did. You are not going to be judged by anybody else's standard. I, this is between me and you. And I'm sharing that again with you today because that is how the Holy Spirit works with us today. And aren't you glad about it? That God is not always looking at you saying, uh, Reverend Myers, you know, T.D. Jakes has tens of thousands of people in his ministry, right? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Could you imagine if God was always comparing you and me to other people? God says, I am calling you. Have you done what I told you to do? Not are you being obedient to my calling for someone else's life. So don't ever worry about what other people are doing. God is only kind, going to engage with you as God has engaged with you, what God told you to do. Just because somebody else is out there doing greater things or lesser things, it does not matter. God is going to approach you and God is going to approach me for what for the things that God has called upon in our lives. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it because that takes a lot of stress. Go, oh, you look on social media, you look in the news, man, some people are doing some great things and I can feel overwhelmed and ashamed and, and useless. Other people are doing some disgusting things and, and horrible things and I can get proud and proud. Oh yeah, I'm better than those folks. But God is not comparing me to others and God is not comparing you to others. God is just saying, are you being faithful for the things that I spoke into your life, the things that I called into your lives? Because those are the things that I'm going to hold you accountable for, because those are the things that I provided you resources for. So he immediately started this thing called the blame game. Not only did he blame the woman, as if he became some kind of robot, I must hear, and obey. You know, I know our beautiful wives has a lot of influence on our lives. Amen, somebody. Yeah, I'm bringing you in. Uh huh. You know, sometimes, you know, you, the, 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 your spouse has a, a great impact in your life. But God still said, I didn't say, have y'all ate the fruit. I'm saying, Adam, did you eat it? because I commanded you. So he not only blamed the woman, but he also kind of blamed God in little, little uh, sideways, didn't he? He said, well, the woman that you gave me, God, so I figured if you gave it to me, if you gave her to me, you said she was my help, didn't you? You created her to help me, so, she helped me to a slice of apple <laughs> or whatever that fruit was. <laughs> so God, I'm just saying, you gave it to me. I just listened to her because she made some good arguments. So I figured it looked good and I had some. And then God turned around and asked the woman, well, what is this you have done? Once again, 
God was not asking Eve about Adam, about the serpent, about the fruit, nothing. What is it that you have done? And okay, well, if Adam can pass the buck, I can too. Hot potato, uh, the serpent deceived me. You know, confession is a powerful thing because, uh, you know, how can God bring you to point B if you don't even uh, acknowledge that you are at point A? If you don't acknowledge that you have a problem right now, how can you move on to address it? That's why in both cases, God asked them, where are you right now? And instead of just confessing and acknowledging where they were, they began to make excuses and blaming others and saying, well, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Many people today know dealing with drug addicts and alcoholics are, are like that. You're trying to approach them and get them to get out of that state of denial and say, hey, where are you? Where, where am I? I am Michael Dean Myers and I'm an alcoholic. That's how they start. Because once we acknowledge where we are, then we can support you, we can give you resources, we can give you guidance on where to go from here, but you have to first acknowledge where here is. Same thing what God is trying to do uh, in the church, in the people of God through the active work of the Holy Spirit in your life. First, ask you, where are you? And you can be ashamed and you can be disappointed in yourselves because you know you should be there, but you're not. You know God gave you every chance possible to be there. And by now, man, you should have been there. But God is not asking you, where should you be? God is asking, where are you? Because once we come to grips with where you are, then God can begin to take you and walk with you to the place you need to be. God is calling you today. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care how many times you messed up. Don't get caught in the trap of Adam and Eve where instead of acknowledging where you are, you're constantly pointing fingers or you're constantly hiding among those resources that God gave you thinking, hey, you know, I, I, I'd rather just focus on tending the garden like God told me to and find yourself fallen from God and separated from God. What I thank God for today is the fact that God is still going to be looking for you. I don't care how long you've been hiding. I don't care how long you've been running. If you just stop long enough to listen, you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit calling your name individually, saying, child, where are you? Until you begin to answer that directly, there may be some consequences. We all know Adam and Eve face some consequences, but they never be stop ceasing to become the child of God that they've always been. God did not reject them. God may have kicked them out the garden, but obviously the garden was not where they needed to be. And God may have blessed you in the past, but maybe you, like in my life, maybe there's come a time when you couldn't stand the blessing and God had to remove you from that to start over with you in a new place in a new time. But the thing that has been constant from the beginning all the way up to June 2021 is that the presence of God in your life through the Holy Spirit is something that God wants to enjoy with you every single day. You got to stop the denial. You got to stop the finger pointing. Yeah, you can point to a pastor who lets you down. 
You can point to some old church that you thought it was full of a bunch of hypocrites. You can blame a whole lot of, you can do like, like Adam and Eve and blame the devil himself. There's always someone you could blame if you wanted to. But God is still going to call, where are you? What have you done? And are you ready to confess? And are you ready to come back into my daily presence? Because that is my will for you and all the people of God. God is calling. Where are you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this powerful story. And forgive us, those of us who have been so blessed in our lives. And all of a sudden, we became distracted. And we began to use your blessings even as a hiding place from the presence of the Lord. Forgive us. And thank you, Lord, that even in our sin and even in our rebellion, God is still looking for us. The scripture says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even knowing what we have done, even knowing what we failed to do, you still are calling us and you are still working salvation and enjoyment of your presence daily for our good. God, thank you that you love us so much. And thank you, Lord, that you are not the God some of us, many of us, were taught you were. Help us never to hide ourselves from you. Because at the end of the day, many of us acknowledge that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. And let us never take your presence for granted again. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen.